Welcome back to P3. Today we are starting Unit 5 Exponentials and Logarithms and today we're going to start looking at the exponential function. The exponential function is of the form a constant raised to the power x. An example would be y equals 3 to the power x. And if we wanted to draw this accurately, we could use a table of values very much like we did at GCSE to draw quadratic graphs accurately or linear graphs accurately. Now, I'm not going to do that today because I think that's quite straightforward. Now, let's have a little look at what we're going to do, which is just based on sketching. Now, if I was to draw this y equals 3x graph, I would get a graph that looks something like this. It's going to cross at 1, because when x equals 0, y will be equal to 1. This part of the graph is going to head towards the x-axis, but never reach it. Okay. Um, and this part of the graph is just going to get steeper and steeper. If you think about it logically as x is a positive value, so as it gets bigger and bigger and positive, you're looking at y equals 3 to the power 5, y equals 3 to the power 8, and so on. And these numbers are jumping up bigger and bigger. When I look at negative numbers of x, say y equals 3 to the power minus 1, well that's one third. If I look at y equals 3 to the power negative 3, well that's 1 over 3 cubed, so 1 over 27. And what you can see is that the bottom number of my fraction is going to jump up in size, which means that fraction is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller, closer to zero, but never hit it. Now just before we get into some examples, if you have been finding these videos useful, please subscribe if you haven't done so already. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Go back and look at some of the other videos. I have quite a lot of videos on there. I upload a video every day, but I am currently working on both P1 and P3. So some days I'll upload from P1 and some days from P3. Let's look at the first example. So here we have three graphs, y equals 3x, y equals 5x, and y equals 3 over 2 raised to the power x. Now what I can say straight away is for all three graphs, when x is 0, then all of them will be y equals 1. So I know they're all going to go through this point on the y-axis. Now, as my values of x are positive, so I'm looking at the right of the y-axis, when I look at my three graphs, y equals 3 to the power x, y equals 5 to the power x, and y equals 3 over 2 to the power x, I know that y equals 3 to the power x, that's going to be that middle one. And if I think of this y equals... 3 over 2 to the power x that's going to go from the same point but it's not going to be as steep and then when I look at the y equals 5 to the power x that is going to be the steepest one there and it's important to recognise that 3 to the power 8 is not as big as 5 to the power 8. Equally, 3 to the power 8 is bigger than 3 over 2 to the power 8. Just picking a random value of x. Now, when I look at where x is smaller than 0, so x being less than 0, what I find is that the opposite happens. So if I pick a few values to show you, so say I had minus 1 for example then 5 to the power x is 1 fifth 3 to the power x is 1 third 
and 3 over 2 to the power x is 2 over 3. And you can see that this smaller graph on the right hand side, on the positive x's, is the larger one on the left hand side. And again, that's just something that I need to be wary of, I need to be careful of. So what I want to do is I want to generally start with this middle value. That's the easiest way to think about it. Let's start with, I think. Then I know that my y equals 3 over 2x is going to be slightly above that. And y equals 5 to the power x is going to be the one that's below that. And it's just trying to get that obvious bit in just with my use of colours here. And I should strive to still try and get these so they are heading towards the axes. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with if you can't quite get it right, you know, extend your line and start trying to get them a bit closer, making it a little bit obvious that they are heading that way. Okay, and that's quite simply all I need to do to be able to sketch these. Now you should really only have two to compare in any exam rather than three, but it is the possibility that they could ask a question like this. Now for my second example, I wanna look at y equals one third x. Because what's happening is that when this, if I look at y equals a to the power x, when a is between one and zero, I notice something slightly different happening. So if I think about as x is positive and it's growing a larger and larger positive number, my y equals one third x. If I think of, you know, substituting two in, I get a ninth, three in, I get one over 27, and so on. As I increase that value of x, I'm getting a smaller and smaller fraction. Okay, and again, this is gonna hit at one, but as I'm going to the positives, I'm getting a smaller and smaller fraction. So it's heading towards this x-axis. Now, when I think about what's happening as x is negative, well, let's start with the first integer of x. So 1 third to the minus 1, well, that's going to be 3. y equals 1 third to the minus 2, that's going to be 9, and so on. So these numbers are going to get bigger and bigger, jumping up. And what we actually get is a reflection. Okay, so y equals 1 over 3 is exactly the same graph or the reflection of in a minute but exactly the same graph as y equals 3 to the power minus x okay which is why it's a reflection of 3 to the power x if i sorry i missed out the x there if i think about it you know and i'll write it over here so y equals one third to the power x so that is 3 to the power 1 to the power x, so that is 3 to the power negative x. So just to go through it exactly. Okay, which if you think of your translations and transformations that you've done previously, so, so this would be essentially like a stretch of negative 1, which is why you end up with a reflection. So we would have a perfect, my graph drawing isn't perfect, but we'd have a perfect reflection of 3 to the power x here. And on this side, we would be looking at y equals 1 over 3 to the power x, or y equals 3 to the power minus x. Okay, so both of those graphs look the same. And this is another important thing. So when we're looking at between 0 and 1 for that base value, okay, when it's that fraction, it is going to look like a reflection of essentially the inverse of that.
Now I'm going to label my equations 1 and 2. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the bigger equation 2 and I'm going to divide it by 1. And what that will do is that will get rid of my value of k or my unknown k. So I'm taking this and I'm dividing it by 1. So 48 divided by 6, I can do exactly, it's going to be 8, the k's are going to cancel, and 1a will go with this a here. That'll leave me on the left hand side of my equals just 8, and on the right a cubed. Then taking the cube root of 8, that will mean that a is 2. Now that I've done that, I just need to substitute it back into one of my equations. So substitute a equals 2 into 1, as that's the easiest equation. 6 equals k times 2. So k is going to be 3. And that is this question solved. Nice and easy. So for this one, if I'm looking at the sketch and just look at the points. So you've got minus 3, 150, which is a very large value. Um, you've got 2, 0 0.048, which is a very small value. And if you think of the shape of the graph, is something like this. And obviously it's going to carry on going towards that x-axis there. So what's happening here is that as x is increasing positively, so as x is tending towards positive infinity, y is tending towards zero. And when I look in the negative values of x, as x tends towards negative infinity, y is tending towards positive infinity. And this can only happen if that base value, that value for Q, is between 0 and 1. So as X is increasing, Y is decreasing. Now part B is very similar to the last question. We just need to substitute our values in. So we have 150 is equal to PQ to the minus 3. And we've got 0 0.048 is equal to PQ to the power 2. And again, we're just going to do one equation divide by the other one. So I'm going to start with a 0 0.048 equals PQ squared. And I'm going to divide that by my other equation, like so. So obviously my p's are going to cancel straight away, so I don't need to worry about those. q squared divided by q to the negative 3 is going to be q to the power 5, 2 minus minus 3. And when I look at the right, just popping this in your calculator, um, and I'll write it down there as a fraction. And then taking the fifth root of this will give me one fifth. So I'm taking the fifth root of three, one, two, five, one over three, one, two, five, and that gives me one over five as my value of Q. Now I'm gonna pop that in equation one. So I've got P times one, to the minus 3. So 1 fifth to the minus 3 is 5 to the power 3 p or 125. So p is 150 over 125, which is 6 over 5. If you want the answers in decimals, then we've got one, 0 0.2 and 1.2.
Hopefully you've enjoyed this video, found it useful at least. Tomorrow we're going to look at y equals e to the power ax plus b and then plus a constant. As e is a very special number in terms of exponentials. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon so that you know when this next video will drop.